Welcome back to A Global Kitchen. I'm really excited to share with you today that I'm going to be starting a new series called Cook the Book. I'm going to cook one or several recipes from a cookbook that I think you should consider adding to your collection. And I'll be doing one or two of these a month. Now, it might be a recent release or it might be a classic cookbook or one that I've had on my shelves for a while and I keep returning to. One of the goals of having this channel is to show you that it's easy to cook a variety of different styles of cuisines, but sometimes you need a little help and guidance to get you started. And so I think the first book that I've selected for Cook the Books is perfectly aligned to meet these goals. And it's called Vegetarian Chinese Soul Food, Deliciously Doable Ways to Cook Greens, Tofu, and Other Plant-Based Ingredients. And it's by Xiao Ching Chow. I purchased the ebook version of the book so that's why I don't have a hard copy in my hands to show you. So any of the images that you see are screenshots from that version. This is a great companion to her first book, Chinese Soul Food, but this one fo focuses solely on vegetarian recipes. This is a great book if you're new or unfamiliar to cooking Chinese recipes or meals, as I think it's a great launching pad to get you started. At the front of the book, there's lots of helpful tips how to season a wok, what things to consider when you're buying essential pantry ingredients or equipment. There's also an illustration of what the different vegetable cuts look like and some guidance on cooking techniques. For me, recipes, especially savory ones, are considered to be guidelines for the cook. And after reading through this book, I believe the author Xiao Ching also believes this. She provides a very helpful table of suggested ingredient combinations for you to start to freestyle from the recipes in this book. The book also has an interesting section on different soy sauce tasting notes. And if you're eating in a more vegetarian style, but you sometimes want to include some meat and seafood, she provides tips on how to include them in the recipes. There's a lot of recipes in this book that jumped out at me. I'm definitely gonna make some of the dumpling recipes and I have my eye on the flaky ribbon pancakes and the Hong Kong style crispy noodles. But for today, I'm gonna cook three recipes from the book. Sweet potatoes with shallot chili jam, wok seared broccoli with chili, and stir fried brown rice with oyster mushrooms and greens. I'm really excited to get started, so let's start cooking. In the book, Xiao Ching suggests that you steam cubes of sweet potato, but she also mentions in the head note that her mother loves roasted sweet potato, and so does my family. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I have the sweet potato. I'm gonna prick it four or five times in each one to let the steam out. And then I'm going to bake it or roast it in the, a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven or 200 Celsius for about 40 or 45 minutes until it's tender and lightly caramelized. To make the chili shallot jam, I'm first gonna slice some shallots. Then I'll heat up some oil over medium heat. When the oil starts to shimmer, I'll add the sliced shallots, give them a good stir, and cook them for a minute or two. Next, I'll pour in some soy sauce and stir in some sugar. I'm gonna add some fermented broad bean chili paste, doubang jian. It's often used in Sichuan dishes like mapo tofu and hot pot. Fermentation specialist Sandor Katz has a great episode about it on his channel. Link is in the description box. Bring it to a simmer, reduce the heat to low, and let it cook, stirring occasionally for around 10 to 12 minutes. As the shallots cook, I'm gonna prep the stir-fried broccoli ingredients. I'm thinly slicing a whole mild long red chili. It'll give the dish a nice mild chili heat. You can also use a jalapeno pepper if you like. And roughly chopping a couple cloves of garlic. When you buy broccoli, you'll sometimes notice they have longer stems. Sadly, mine don't today as the stem has a great texture and it's wonderful to eat. First, I'm gonna cut the broccoli into bite-sized pieces. You don't want them to be too large, well, they'll take longer to cook. To use broccoli stem, either peel or trim off the outer layer. Broccoli stems that are large or old, the closest part to the root, tend to be tough. If it's young or closer to the florets, it's generally tender enough not to have to peel it. Then thinly slice it into bite-sized pieces. Now let's check on our chili shallot jam. When the shallots are softer and a darker caramel color, remove it from the heat and let it cool in the pot for at least another 10 minutes. 
You can keep this lovely condiment in the fridge for several months. Now I'm going to prepare the stir-fried rice ingredients before heading to the stove. I'm first going to finely chop some scallions. I've got some lovely oyster mushrooms. First trim off the tougher base. You can thinly slice it to add it to the stir-fry, or save it for vegetable stock or use it in a soup. That's what I'm going to do. I like to thinly slice the tougher stems to help them finish cooking at the same time as the more tender caps. Tear the larger caps into bite-sized pieces. The recipe in the book calls for yu choy or gai lan. My nearby Asian grocer was out of both, so I've decided to use some turnip greens to add a fresh bitterness to the stir fry. I find the stems stringy today, so I'm going to slice the more tender part of the washed and rinsed greens. If the stems were more tender, I'd happily add them. I cooked some brown jasmine rice yesterday. I let it air dry until room temperature and then refrigerated it. I'm breaking up any clumps of rice to help get individual grains. Before you start to stir fry, it's important to have everything organized. I've got my wok, or you can use a large skillet instead. You also need something to stir the ingredients, like a wok spatula, a fish slice spatula, or even a solid spoon. Make sure you have your ingredients ready and nearby. I have my broccoli and aromatics, and the seasoning liquids of soy sauce and water. And it's a good idea to even have your serving dish next to the stove. I've preheated my wok over high heat, and now that I see wisps of smoke rising from it, I'm gonna swirl in the oil. When it shimmers, which happens quickly, add the chili and garlic and stir fry for five seconds. You'll definitely notice their wonderful aroma. Add the broccoli and stir fry for a couple of minutes until some of the broccoli starts to char on the edges. Sometimes I like to leave it for 10 seconds or so to help with the charring. Pour in the water and soy sauce and stir fry for another minute or two. The broccoli is done when it's cooked through, but still has a bite to it. The only way to know is to sample a piece of broccoli. If you cook it too long, it may become soft and soggy. Transfer the broccoli to the serving dish. You really can't beat quick stir-fried broccoli with chili and garlic. This method is fabulous with other vegetables, but you'll need to adjust the cooking time depending on their density and size. Next, I'm gonna prepare the stir-fried rice. I'll heat my wok or skillet over medium heat. Again, when it smokes, I'll swirl in some oil. When it's hot and begins to shimmer, I'll pour in two whisked eggs. You want to stir fry the eggs until they're just done, where the curds are still soft and a touch creamy. Transfer the eggs to a dish and rinse your wok or skillet to clean out any remaining eggy bits. Return the wok or skillet to the stove and heat it over high heat. Swirl in the oil and then add the scallions and stir fry for five seconds. Next, toss in the mushrooms and stir fry for 30 seconds. Then add in the chopped greens. Stir fry for another 30 seconds before returning the egg to the wok or skillet. Reduce the heat to medium low and add the cooked room temperature rice. Stir it well to break up any clumps and to gradually heat up the rice. Continue to stir and toss the rice and then add in the seasoning ingredients of soy sauce and black bean garlic sauce. I used some bean chili paste instead as the store was out of stock of black bean garlic sauce. Increase the heat to medium high and continue to cook it for another 10 seconds or so to give it a nice blast of heat. Season it with some pepper, white is preferred if you have it. Give it a taste and adjust it if needed with some salt. Then transfer to your serving dish. Here's our bowl of wholesome stir-fried brown rice with mushrooms and greens. So easy to make and so versatile to use other vegetables. So the sweet potatoes are roasted and I'm gonna gently peel away the skin and then cut them into more manageable bite-sized pieces and then transfer them to my serving platter. And gradually spoon some of the shallot chili jam on the sweet potato and sprinkle some cilantro for a final fresh garnish. And here's our final dish of sweet potato with shallot chili jam. I'm really excited to dig into these bright, fabulous looking dishes. So let's have a taste. Mm. Mm. That sweet potato shallot jam is really great. Mm. So is the broccoli and this rice, the stir fried rice is fabulous. What I really like is these flavors are clean and they're wonderfully wholesome. I think that there's a lot of recipes in this book that you can incorporate 
into your weekday, weekday meal planning. The great thing about them too is that once you have the chopping done, so you can chop that in advance, but the cooking time is really, really fast on a lot of these recipes. I'm gonna leave a recipe for one of these dishes in the description box below, so please take a look for that. And I'm also gonna leave a link for where you can purchase the book. So do consider adding it to your collection. If you haven't already, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to A Global Kitchen and to come back for more great recipes. Again, thanks for watching. Bye and happy cooking.